Hello cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. Guys, honestly, it is so cold that even the sun is shining, but it's icy outside. It's still just 10 degrees. I have to say, working outside hasn't been at all appealing the last few days. I've been zipping in and pottering around the garden doing a bit, then racing inside to warm up, then going back outside and doing a bit more, racing back inside to warm up. While I've been inside, I've been working on a couple of orders that have come through Home Among the Gum Trees for canning mats and an order for curtain tie backs and a couple of pot holders. So I've, I've been busy at the sewing machine. And while I've been working on these projects, I've been thinking about where the fabric for them came from and how expensive new fabric can be, especially the specialty fabrics like the quilting cottons, the really beautiful quilting cottons or the licensed quilting cottons, you know, the Disney ones or the May Gibbs ones. And good quality clothing fabric is so expensive. So where do you get your fabrics? I know I source fabric from all over the place. Now I do buy new fabric, usually on Boxing Day when Spotlight and Lincraft have their Christmas clearance sales and their Christmas fabrics especially are marked way down. It has to be marked way, way down, about 80% off or it's just too expensive, it really is. I keep an eye out during the year and if they've got a really good sale on, I might stock up on some more. But I usually think outside the box. Um, and it is amazing what you can find when you think outside the box for fabric because we are surrounded by fabric. I think tablecloths. Now, a few years ago, a few years ago now, I recovered our kitchen chairs and stools using a $10 tablecloth I bought on clearance from Target. It was a huge tablecloth. Now, our dining table is an odd size. So the standard um, six-seater rectangular table is too small. The eight-seater just sort of gives it, it's an odd size. This tablecloth was huge. And I did actually buy it thinking it would go on the table. But when I looked at it and saw just how much fabric I was getting for that $10, I was super excited. So I covered the kitchen chairs. I covered the kitchen stools. And there's enough left to recover the chairs again if I want to in the future. Although I made the covers so that they come off and can be washed and to make placemats and a table runner to match now I haven't done the placemats or the table runner table runner but the fabric is there if and when I want to or I might just use it for something else so when you see a tablecloth don't think of it as just a tablecloth some of them are so pretty, especially the cotton ones or the satin ones or the um, poly cotton tablecloths. Beautiful prints on them. They could be used for clothing. They could be used to make curtains or pelmets or cushion covers or tea towels or pot holders, or shopping bags, or makeup purses. You really are only limited by your imagination. Now, another source of fabric, thinking big like tablecloths, is sheeting. Sheets are huge. Even single bed sheets are huge. There is a lot of fabric that can be used for other things, including the backing for quilts. Now, sheets make great curtains. Brilliant curtains. I did curtains for Hannah's room from sheets. When we moved into our first house, my mother-in-law gave us beautiful cotton sheets 
from her glory box that I was supposed to use for curtains or to actually line the drapes and the, sh the quality is so nice I haven't done that I do use they are my good tablecloths so sheets make great tablecloths too pure cotton sheets make lovely summer dresses sundresses um, shifts they make really nice blouses they make really comfortable trousers and shorts um, so when you're looking at a sheet don't think of it as something that just goes on your bed Duna covers are another source of fabric and best thing is you get double the fabric because you have a front and a back now I have a Duna cover here that let me see where is it I've got a whole heap of stuff here um, okay I have this one I'll show you isn't that so pretty look at that can you see that really pretty delicate print it's still in the bag from when I got it at the op shop got it from Vinnie's it was six dollars it's a queen sized doona cover in near new condition with two pillow slips for six dollars and I haven't opened it I've had it for ages the fabric is so pretty I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it but it was too pretty to pass up another one I have where can I put that out of the way is this one and it's really cute too and I've been hanging on to this one this is a single bed and see it's embroidered with the gingham and the backing where's the backing of this one is just the plain pink now that's a single bed um, it's so pretty I have um, plans for this <laughs> I do have plans for this one and it was only four dollars there's a lot of fabric in there for four dollars so don't discount or don't ignore sheets and doona covers speaking of doona covers pillow slips I'm sure by now any anyone that sews has seen the um, pillow slip dress for little girls the little summer dress with the drawstrings it's so pretty made out of a pillow slip really simple now pillow slips come in beautiful patterns and colors and fabrics and they are everywhere at the op shops 50 cents each maybe Although if you have to buy a new one, they can be bought for as little as $2 each. Now Kmart sell them, sell beautiful 100% um, cotton pillow slips for $4 each. Gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. And actually right now if you zip over to the Kmart website or call into your Kmart store, they have what they call toddler pillowcases on clearance and it's a set of two for a dollar. You get one patterned pillow slip, one plain pillow slip. That is a bargain and you are getting a lot of fabric that you can do a lot with for one dollar. While we're talking of big things of fabric, big expanses of fabric, think curtains. There's a lot of fabric in curtains. Flimsies can be used to make veggie bags. I did a post, must be 10 or more years ago, it's over on Cheapskates Club in the article archive um, about making veggie bags. You get a lot of veggie bags from one curtain. Now, my original curtain came from Vinnie's and it cost the grand sum of $2.50 because they thought it looked, I remember at the time, the lady apologising because it looked a bit grey and dingy. Well, a good soak and it came up really clean. Now that one curtain made all my veggie bags and for Christmas that year I made sets of them and gave them to friends. So one curtain made 10 sets of five veggie bags with heaps of fabric left over. And you can be sure it didn't go to waste because I use it to make lingerie bags. Now I use lingerie bags in the washing machine just about every load. 
it means I can do a mixed load and nothing gets covered in fluff. So if I put light things in with dark things, the light things don't get the fluff on them. Um, it saves water, it saves time, saves the frustration of tissues in the wash because they're in bags so the tissues don't go through the whole load. Um, although that doesn't happen very often here because we don't use tissues as a rule. But from one curtain, the $2.50, I was able to get a lot of very useful things. Now, speaking of curtains, drapes. Drapes can be used to make cushion covers. Dinner covers can be used to make drapes too. I've done that before as well. But drapes can be used to make cushion covers. They can be used to make table runners or shopping bags or knitting bags or quilting bags or overnight bags. Um, drapery can be used to make coats and jackets or vests. Again, it's a big piece of fabric and you are only limited by your imagination. So don't dismiss curtains and drapes as a source of fabric when you're looking for it. Now another source of fabric that I use a lot is tea towels. Just plain cotton tea towels. Okay? Here's the plain cotton tea towel. How pretty is that? That's a nice one. They are so convenient for smaller projects. And being 100% cotton, they are good for anything that is going to get a lot of wear and tear or a lot of heat, you know, to make um, pot holders and things. Because, yes, I make pot holders from tea towels. <laughs> I make peg bags. Where are they? Here's one. I make peg bags from tea towels. That's just a tea towel. I make shoe bags from tea towels, placemats from tea towels, table runners from tea towels. Scozies from tea towels. Do you know what a scozy is? I should put this, I should have put this on a plate for you, but it's um, for keeping your scones warm. See, it has pockets in it. And you pop, pop a scone in there after they're warm out of the oven and sit that on your plate and it keeps your scones warm. And because it's fabric, they don't sweat. So they'll stay warm without going soggy. Scozies are really good. You can use um, tea towels to make scozies. You can use other things too, doilies, pillowcases, bits of sheeting, all sorts of things. Anything that's cotton or linen is really good for a scozy. And again, I've got the instructions for those over on our website, which is cheapskatesclub.net. So, tea towels can also be used for children's clothing. Go figure. Shorts, little dresses, t-shirts, little button-down shirts for little boys, scrunchies. They can be used for all sorts of things. Tea towels, nice soft tea towels make great hankies. So if you have a lot of cotton tea towels and um, or linen tea towels and you're looking to replace them because you think they're a bit dingy for the kitchen, think about cutting them up for hankies because they've been washed so many times the fibres are so soft and you're blowing your nose on a natural, something nice and natural, not from a tissue that's paper because you made from trees and you don't blow your nose on a tree because it's rough choose something soft so think about that you know cutting them down and hemming them for hankies save your fortune because hankies are very expensive um, to buy new or good quality ones are anyway another thing that makes great hankies Button-down shirts, you know men's cotton button-down shirts? Great hankies. They also make really nice serviettes. Um, you know those Hawaiian shirts that every man has at least one hiding in the back of the wardrobe or folded in a drawer somewhere that they just won't let go of? Get them out. Cut them down for serviettes for summer. They are so soft and so 
cheery as serviettes or hankies, if you prefer to use them as hankies. And if you do that, they're being used. They're not just taking up space in the wardrobe or the drawers. Or if you have checked shirts, they make beautiful serviettes and placemats. And you can have a mix and match set for the kitchen. Or you can cut them down to make children's shirts or shorts or PJs. Now, on that note, thinking outside the box again and being me and liking to be prepared, what about undies? Have you thought what you would do for underwear if the shell grit hit the fan and the whole world imploded and you couldn't get undies? You couldn't get new undies. T-shirts make great undies for children and for adults. Or if you have them and don't use them or find one at the op shop, op shop, silk pillow slips or even silk sheeting makes the most luxurious undies, makes beautiful camisoles, nighties, PJs, petticoats if you'll wear them, even blouses and shirts. Um, and the scraps can be used to make headbands or scrunchies because silk scrunchies are so very gentle on your hair. Now, T-shirts also make great library and shopping bags and that's another pattern we have on our website the instructions are on a tip sheet for that for turning a t-shirt into a library bag or a shopping bag um, I was about to say something else then and it's gone well it's gone it'll come to me as soon as I say goodbye but anyway, when it comes to finding fabric for your sewing projects, look around you. We are surrounded by fabric. Look at the fabric that you are not using. Open that linen cupboard and see what's taking up space on the shelf. Think about how often you use it or if you have ever used it. Go through your wardrobe. Have a good look at the T-shirts, the shirts, the dresses, the coats, even the trousers because they can be cut down to make long pants for a little boy or they can be turned into shorts for you. We really are surrounded by fabric so much. We don't need to pay full price for it. We just need to look at what we see as a finished project, not as a sheet or a tea towel or a curtain or a tablecloth or a doona cover. Because it's so versatile. All right, so I've been waffling on for a while. Now this covers just a few sources of fabric. And you can get them from the op shop, you can get them from markets, you can buy them from stores. Um, our craft shop sometimes sells packets done up like this. So there's um, two metres of fabric in there for $2. Two pretty patterns. Not sure what I'll do with those, but we will do something. Or um friends um these were given to me i'll show you there we go these fabrics were given to me by a friend they were given to her and she couldn't use them so she passed them on to me and i have used quite a bit of these both these fabrics i made face masks out of it i've done scrunchies out of them i've done an apron out of each of them so if people know you sew, let them know that you are always open to accepting fabric. Um, another piece of fabric I was given from another friend is this gorgeous, look at this. This is really nice um, double knit. There were teddy bears on it. Now I will do something with that for a baby coming on. Waste not, want not. Now, I don't accept, no, I shouldn't say that. I usually accept any, any fabric that I'm given, but I do have a good look at it. And if I'm sure that it's something I can't use, 
I pass it on. I don't just hoard it and hang on to it. Before I go, one last source of really um, good fabric for home decorating type projects for table runners, helmets, um, placemats, tablecloths, cushion covers, and that sort of thing is this. Now, oops, there goes something. And this is simply drop cloth. This is painter's drop cloth. Now, this is how it comes. It's shaped like this. This was a cheapy one I got. Bunnings sell them. It works out for this beautiful, beautiful fabric. Works out to be around a third the price of buying the equivalent fabric from a fabric store. It's pure cotton. It washes well. It irons well. It's unbleached. So it's that gorgeous shade that I just love. So drop cloths are another source of fabric that is inexpensive. It is new fabric, but it's inexpensive. It washes up beautifully and it irons. I iron it and I just spritz it with lavender water as I iron it before I'm ready to cut it out. And it is wonderful to sew with. Okay, well. This has been um, a bit longer than I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to finish off. But there is a lot more to sewing on a budget. So I think we'll need to do at least one more, at least one more waste, not want, not show on sewing on a budget or sewing within a cheapskate's budget. And before I go, thank you so much for watching if you have made it this far. If you liked our show, please give us a thumbs up. Please, 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 thumbs up. And if you know someone who might like this show or who might benefit from knowing about the Cheapskates Club, please just use the share button to send them the link. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, click that subscribe button below me, then click the bell and select how often you want to be notified of new videos on our channel. It helps YouTube, but more importantly, it helps our channel cheapskates club to be recognized more easily and the more easy it is to find us the easier it is to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life debt free cashed up and laughing but it can still be done even in today's crazy world in 2022 happy cheapskating everyone and have a great day